Okay, in this video I'm going to continue on with exercise 3D of the book Fundamental Applied Mathematics. We're on page 87 and the question is number 3 but we're doing part 2. So this is a direct continuation on of part 1. So for that reason I won't do all the details again. I'm just going to, like I said, directly continue on from it. So if you look at uh, question 3, part 2, we would have worked out an expression for S sub X. And the, at the very end of it we worked out a time for the maximum fly or the maximum range we'll say. So now we're asked to max we're asked to maximize the angle theta to give us a maximum range. So we're said, well what angle will give us the maximum range? Now, this is difficult. As far as I'm concerned, this is quite difficult. It's not uh, it's something we've done before, as in I've definitely done this video before, a similar uh, video similar to it, except this time we're using we have two parts to it rather than a single part. And you, we're going to use differentiation, so you won't have done differentiation on towards, until towards the end of fifth year. So if you haven't done that yet, so be it. Wait, and definitely when it comes to sixth year, you'll be able to do it this way. And I think this is the best way to maximize or minimize functions. So we need to use a small bit of differentiation. And before I do that, I want to do a quick bit of re revision. If we have a function, I'm going to call my function s and s is a function of other variables so they might be a function of u theta t um, and alpha now what that means let's put this into everyday language you might say I want to know how to make my breakfast so s might be breakfast and you would say breakfast is a function of milk bowl porridge spoon and they are all the ingredients you need. So this, the function here will give you the ingredients of your, your, your breakfast. And then you'll need to know the recipe. So you might say it is u cos theta t plus g over 2 sine alpha t squared. This would be the recipe. So you know if you had a u here, or we'll say a bowl here, um, this much of porridge, this much of your, your spoon, this much milk and so on, you'll be able to make your breakfast. So your breakfast is a function of four different things, your four ingredients, and when you put them in this recipe, you make your breakfast. So what we have here is uh, we have a recipe for your distance. So S sub X is a function of the initial velocity, the angle of inclination, the time, and the angle of the angle of the uh, or the angle of inclination and the angle of projection, and this is the recipe for it. All right. So the next thing we need to do is work out how to maximize this function. So to maximize it or minimize it, you must differentiate it with respect to whatever variable you want to maximize. So if I want to find out what speed will give me the maximum uh, range, I will say ds du. That's max speed or minimum speed. If I want to say uh, maximum inclination, I would say ds d alpha, max incline. If I want to get the maximum angle of, of projection, I would say ds d theta. That's the maximum. Um, projection. All right. Well, which one of these are we looking for? We are looking for ds d theta. So we will differentiate this function only with respect to theta, and that means that everything else is just a constant. So so alpha is a constant, uh, t is a constant, and so is u. And the only variable we have is theta. Now, just to make this function slightly easier we're going to do the following. You're going to plug in the value for t and just to get rid of the variable t just for the sake of it. So you can now say s sub x is equal to negative 2 u squared cos theta times sine theta over g cos alpha and this becomes plus g over 2 sine alpha u squared sine squared theta over g squared cos squared alpha. We can get rid of this g here, we don't need that anymore. Alright, so now we have the following, we have 
s sub x is equal to s sub x of u, theta, and alpha, rather than t. So it's now a 3, it's a function of 3 variables now. But we are still going to maximize it, or differentiate it, with respect to theta. Now, the best thing to do is to work out, you, want your, you don't want variables. Variables are a pain, so you want to pull them away from the differentiation. So I'm going to try the following. If you manipulate it like this, if you pull out a variable g cos squared alpha below, and on top pull out 2u squared. Now these are all constants with respect to the differentiation of theta. So let's see what we have left. We have, if I pull out the minus sign as well, if we divide, we want to pull out a cos squared, so we must multiply by on top by an alpha. We have, um, do you want that 2? Yeah, that 2 is gone. We have a cos theta, like so. We have cos theta, cos alpha. All right, this now becomes a minus because I've also pulled out the minus. The 2, the should, sorry, there was, should have been a 4 up here. All right, the 2 cancels with the 4, and it can be brought out now. We're left with a sine alpha. The u squared is gone, the cos squared and g, a g are gone, and we're left with, uh, we are left with, the sine theta should be there as well, just one sec there, uh, we're left with, we'll say, a sine, th a sine squared theta. But if you look at this, if I pull out this sine theta and put it over here, this is what I'm left with, an expression which if you look on page 14, of your tables, you'll be able to see, you'll be, you'll be able to uh, change. So yes, there's no problem putting the sign back in here and making this a square and putting a sign here, except it'll 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 make things more difficult for you to find uh, to find um, uh, expressions for. Like I said, I've looked at this in, in already, and this is what I've worked out. So the, if you look at this in your tables on page 14 on the top left, you will find. Now I want a sign, do I, or do I want a cosine? This is a cosine. So this becomes cosine a plus b. So what we're left with, now see all these constants here? I don't want to write them anymore because they're irrelevant. So I'm just going to call them that. That just tells me I have constants. And sine theta isn't a constant, so we need that still. This becomes cos of a plus b, so alpha plus theta. And that's now the new s sub x. All right, and it's equal to s sub x of theta and alpha, because the rest are just plain old constants. All right, so we need to differentiate this with respect to theta. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll say d s d theta is equal to. Now the constants they don't matter. Now this here is the chain rule. The chain rule. Now, well, we do a bit of revision on the chain rule very quickly. So the chain rule says it's v du dx plus u dv dx, or v u prime plus u v prime. So what it basically means is hold one fixed, differentiate the other, then hold the other one fixed and differentiate the other. That's, that's, that's just what the chain rule is. So here we have, if we go back up here, we have a sine and a cosine to differentiate. So I'll hold this fixed and then differentiate that and then I'll add to it this fixed and then differentiate that. So let's just do it. So we get so hold sine fixed differentiate cosine and you get a negative sine and then differentiate inside and we're differentiating with respect to theta so the alpha doesn't matter differentiate theta and you get 1 so that it doesn't affect it. So we get negative sine theta sine alpha plus theta. Then we go plus. Now we hold the cosine fixed and we differentiate the sine theta and that just becomes cosine theta by 1 again. And what did I say we're going to do? We are going to set this to 0. Now this is looking a bit mad. Now the first thing we can do is look, constant multiplied by something to get zero, we can once again get rid of the constants. Don't need them anymore. 
and the next thing we're going to do is look in our log tables again. So we're looking with as cos A, cos B, minus sin A, sin, a, sin B. And you'll find that that is cos A plus B again. All right? Like so. So we have, we have cos of theta plus alpha plus theta. All right, and that's equal to zero. So you have cos of two theta plus alpha is equal to zero. Very nearly there, we're literally two lines away now. So the next thing we need to do, and I'm just gonna rub up bits that we don't need. There's, they're, they're cluttering, cluttering us here. Look at your unit circle. On your unit circle, we have zero, one, negative one, negative one. And we know that the cos of naught is one, and we know that the sine of sine of naught is naught. But we want to know when cos is equal to zero. Well, cos is equal to zero at 90 degrees, or pi over two. So we want cos, we'll just call this whole expression here, cos A, just call that A. When is cos A equal to zero? When A is equal to 90, or A is equal to pi over two. So we'll say that two theta, plus alpha is equal to pi over two. And what does that say? That says that theta is equal to pi over two minus alpha over two. And that's the answer we're given on page 87. Now, that was reasonably tough. Yes, the, the we'll say the mechanics of it never change, the procedure never changes. You're always looking to get to a cosine at the end against the zero and work out a pi or a pi over two or something like this. And I'll be quite honest, this is a procedure. If you're doing maths, physics, engineering, or anything of those things in, in college, this procedure is used very, very, very regularly. You're always maximizing or minimizing functions. So if you understand this, then you're flying it. And like I said, in my opinion, if you can do this, or at least understand it in fifth year and do it in sixth year, then you can do every question on the Leaving Cert paper, or you have the ability to do every question on the Leaving Cert paper. So, thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends and subscribe to my channel.